rivlets touching. Now we on some John's bussing. Uh, the neck is stupid, rangers electrocuting. Raised where the text was booming, gang spraying wet and stupid. I made it all now, I'ma lay it all out. The boss with clout, uh, yeah. Hey yo, if you need music promo or any type of promo, send me a DM at Real St. Laz. You heard, or text this number right here. Business only. Yo. Yeah, so the last thing we left where we left off at is right after right after you won, took that chip, dudes was asking you like, yo, you play football too? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh the whole summer we playing ball and shit, you know. Um I I, I believe I'm at, I'm at Albion at the time. And the whole summer we playing basketball, so Everybody has an idea of who the athletes are, the prime athletes are. I'm, I didn't even know that it was going to be um, how big the flat football skip was going to be. Like, this was a big deal, too. Uh, it was fun as fuck. Dude. It was fun as hell. Um, my first time playing, uh, a guy named Barber, who I believe he probably played college football or some shit like that, stepped to me and a couple other guys was like, yo, y'all playing football? And I'm like, I don't care. I mean, I wasn't going nowhere. I had time to do. And we like bet, so, you know, this guy puts us on his team and shit. Um, in, the, in the flag football league, you didn't have to be on the same unit. You just build yourself a team and shit. And um, I ended up getting invited on the team. My first time ever playing flag football. And um, Saturday mornings, Saturday mornings, um, and basically into the afternoon, there's uh, huge football games. Um, I think it's two games every Saturday. It might be three. And um, some of the, you know, guys that, you know, mostly guys who didn't play basketball. It was, it was basketball players out there as well. Uh, guys who didn't play basketball, this was their chance for them to establish their identity. Um Guys that were weightlifters, powerlifters, um, even guys that were awkward and shit. Like, they was making, if you had a big body, you know, they was essentially making you into a football player. If you had a body, you was known for, like, squatting in the weight pit and shit like that. They wanted you on a, on, on a football team. And, of course, um, me being a, um, you know, I'm a basketball player, dunker. I was asked to play specialty positions and shit, and I played quarterback and wide receiver and shit. I used to run the ball. Um, just fun as fuck, man. Like, nobody's out there trying to maliciously hurt you unless you get caught on um, what's called a chop, a chop, a chop block. And that's when um, the play is running in one direction, and you are, um, you know, advancing and trying to make which uh, a tackle. Snatch somebody's flag. Somebody can hit you. You can hit you. It was, it was a lot. Of, it's a lot of collisions, um, and that's where all of the oohs and ahs on Saturday morning. Um, you know, that's that's what that that was the excitement on Saturday mornings, seeing people get fucked up on those blocks and shit. Mm. Um, I've seen some very gifted quarterbacks. I've seen some real gifted quarterbacks. Um, it was a team when I was up Abbey called the Rough Riders, legendary team. They were all, most of them guys had life or, you know, long term because they had been playing together for some years before I got up there. Before I got, when I got up there, the Rough Riders was always like, already like superstars and shit. And um, they quarterback, they quarterback was actually from New York. Um, they quarterback was crazy. He, he he came out. They had plays on their wrists. They was like the fucking St. Louis Rams, man. Like you would, the police going crazy. Everybody going crazy, man. Like just um, on the highest level, man. You 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 seeing um, power and speed. Like you seeing guys display these gifts, and you know when you get the the backstory behind it, like damn, man, he just threw that ball like sixty yards. You, you get to talk to the guy and you know he was a former quarterback before he did an arm robbery and shit <laughs> you know <what> I'm <laughs> so yo let me ask you so it was it was it was dorms like the football team was all dorms like each dorm had their own team Not, uh, the, the, um, football 
football guys just picked up their teams and shit like that. I think they might have had a lottery. Somebody just threw me on a team my mm. first year playing. Um, I think they might have had a lottery or some shit like that. And teams were formed. But I know that the Rough Riders played played together. And there was nothing, nothing questioned about it. Um, maybe because they was a lifers group. It could have been a lifers organization or something like that. So they didn't, you know, fuck with them as far as their recruiting. They, 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 the requirement to be on a team was you got to have 40 years. <laughs> <Like that. laughs> uh, they had this white boy named Dino um, who was like, man... He was skinny. He was a skinny white boy. He was an Italian guy. I, I, he had life, and he just did everything for these guys, man. He, um, they would do these like all kind of like they was like the Rams, man. They would do these misdirection plays and shit. And they quarterback Doom. He would, you know, be running the play in one direction, and this white boy Dino coming in the other direction, and they didn't pitch this motherfucker the ball, and you know, uh, he he. Oh my goodness, man! He he get to doing his thing, and people think he' about to advance and go past the line of scrimmage, and the white boy take a step back and throw the ball fifty yards. <laughs> mm. The whole yard go crazy. Um, everybody, Puerto Rican guys going crazy. It was a, a co- cohesion involved with sports in jail. Um, dudes that play sports in jail didn't go to the hole last. Niggas wasn't like and the the, the flag football season. It, it started, you know, in the fall at the same time that fucking college football came on. So you waking up in the morning and game day is on TV already. Mm. <laughs> you, watch, you watching uh, Lee Corso and all these guys, man, talking all this crazy shit. And you actually got a game in a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So we would go out to the go out there on the field, man. Like everybody, niggas, we had two pairs of sweatpants on, all types of um knee pads and shit any type of padded that you could come up with you played in it um some guys had cleats the niggas who had cleats was baseball players niggas that played on the fucking baseball team of niggas or niggas that played softball they still you know they had access to cleats or whatever whatever so they on the fucking football field with with actual cleats mm. seriously shit. i've never seen any um altercations at a, on a flag football game um you would see the expertise in people come out, man. Like white guys and shit who, you know, might have might have might have got a white guy, he three hundred pounds or something like that. And you see him doing his shit on the line, like they run a line, they have an offensive line, just like you know football and shit. And there's people rushing the line and shit. So there's collisions every time the ball is snapped. There's collisions. And you seeing these white boys doing these shifts and you know what I mean doing they they pulling, you know they 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 they. they they pass is coming to you know coming becoming useful shit that they grew up some of these guys everybody wasn't always a criminal lads like some guys started out playing little league football and shit before we got into the street some guys play little league baseball you know some, what I'm saying? some and, dudes some dudes um sports was was a lot more important than crime to them when they was in the streets absolutely man it's it's addictive it's um one thing for sure, two things for certain. It's the only thing that I can compare to, you know, the fame that you get being a street star and shit like that. Basketball is, is extreme, just like that. You know what I mean? Like, basketball player, fuck your bitch. You can have all the bricks in the world. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Straight up. Different um, sports was dominated by, um, I don't know, um, when, when softball came. The Dominican guys that don't speak English and shit like that, <laughs> they they come they become activated, man. They out there not hitting home runs and making plays <laughs> in the field and shit like that. Just straight up doing their thing, man, because that's their that's their game on the island of Puerto Rico and shit. They 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 produce you know baseball players, stickball players, or whatever and shit. Especially so, <laughs> especially the Dominican Republic. Forget about it. I tried to play softball in jail. I wasn't good at that shit. I couldn't hit the ball for shit. That requires some upper body strength. You gotta have some fucking technique to play that baseball shit. That yeah, they underestimate huh? softball. People think softball is like, is like, cause it's called softball. People think that it's you know laid back and not intense. You got dudes up. I seen dudes up north that was pitching 
70, 80 miles per hour with a yeah. softball. You understand what I'm saying? Like, sidearm pitches. I knew. Throws, unbelievable throws from the outfield to the home plate. Facts. Man, like, did he just gun him down like that from way out there? Facts. And, and, and I know dudes that was sidearm pitching. Like, you know, that that was sidearm pitches with, with softball. So it's like, yo, you ain't anybody just not hitting those, those. those. And then you got half them dudes that. If you dig into their history, they done tried out for a major league team before, or they was on a farm club or something, or some shit yeah. like that back in the yeah. days. Yeah, that baseball shit is a part of um, those Spanish guys' culture, for real. Like, they was really into that shit, man. <laughs> they was into that. I could play it. I, um, I'm fucking reeking, nigga. Cuss me out. I said, man, I gotta get the fuck from out here, man. An older guy. <laughs> I was playing on the unit, um, the unit baseball team, softball team, or whatever. You know, we all on the same unit, and I'm an athlete that asked me to play. Man, I ain't know what the fuck I was doing. I, I, I used to misjudge the speed of the ball. Like, um, I would have a problem with, they would always tell me, get back, get back. Always tell me that shit. And I would be, you know, fucking around, and motherfucker hit the ball over my head. A couple, after that shit happened a couple of times, Puerto Rican niggas said, man, you got to get the fuck from up out here, man. <laughs> <laughs> Papa, come on, Papa, you gotta come on, man. You fucking up, man. But Joe, so what? So, so with that flag football, like, it was was it the same situation? Playoffs, dudes traveling to other jails, like? Nah, that was that was some um that was it was an intramural league that happened within the jail, man. It was strictly competition. It the jail was designed uh, divided, the east side of the jail and the west side of the jail. So the champions from the west side play the champions from the east side, and uh, it was a big deal man i'm telling you man like co's and shit like that you know they got military backgrounds and football they be former football players and shit they be out there seriously enjoying that shit. And you know they betting you know they betting on them yeah games, yeah, yeah 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 it was definitely um gangs bet on the rough riders they would you know bet like what he's would they come out here and get 60 points today and shit like and they would light it up like that man it would just be it, it was uh, tastefully electrifying because the other team ain't no pushover. But they doing this shit, man. They pitching this ball. They doing these reverses just like the St. Louis one. If anybody listening to me that was in Albion for at least 10 years in the late 90s, they remember the Rough Riders flag football team. Because after they stopped at the traveling basketball, basketball shit, we still played within the jail and shit. But that flag football shit was Fun as a motherfucker, man. It was fun as a motherfucker, lads. I ain't lying, man. I had a real, real good time playing flag football in jail, man. Um, it's a sport that, you know, you get to, you got to trust your um, your teammates and shit, man. Because block blocking and shit like that is required, man. They trying to get to that flag and shit. And um, I had a, again, I, because of my athletic ability and shit, no conflict. I didn't see I think it was probably rare for um, athletes in jail to be in any type of conflict, man. Like, I just didn't see it. I just didn't see it. They didn't go to the whole, like, niggas play. You you be doing time with a guy and competing against him in all three, you know, three sports. You might have played four sports against a guy within a year because he never went to the hole and you never went to the hole. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I, that, that box thing that, you know, I hear New York talk about, box time and shit like that. Mm -hmm. We don't bid. We didn't. We didn't bid like that, man. We don't bid like that, uh, lads, man. We was trying to get some sneakers and shit, man. <laughs> we trying to get a new pair of sneaks, man, man. We trying to be in shape, man. We trying to get our hands on a locks tape on a source magazine. We not trying to go to no fucking hole, man. Like that box shit is crazy. When I hear stories about New York guys talking about being in a hole, like that's regular behavior. I they, they, don't, they don't got box. I know they got boxes though, right? They got boxes. Man, man, hell yeah, man. But niggas be trying to get to the visitor room, man. Niggas don't be bent like yeah, that. Yeah, nah, niggas know? in New York be like that too. Nobody ain't really trying to fuck with that box shit. Now, I mean, niggas trying to stay in population and get some weed. You feel what I'm yeah. saying? Get some visits and shit like that. The box, like when I was up north, I was I only went to the box once. I was in Keep Lock for a few months. And, you know, QB Cube and shit like that. But as far as, like, I'm not trying to fuck with the box because the box is, like, that shit is torture. You feel what I'm saying? So I yeah. couldn't fuck with that shit. I was in the box one good time, and, that, and I was good. 
You feel I me? I got I got one ticket my whole I was doing I did a three to nine. I got one one ride up my whole time. I I broke this toilet. I was standing on this shit trying to hang something and shit. I, that's the only infraction of prison rules that I had the whole time that I was in the joint and shit. I. So let Word. me ask you, what was like you, that. what was you playing mostly though? You was playing quarter, like what was what what did you shine at at? What did you shine uh, at the most? Quarterback, receiver, receiver, receiver. Uh, my man, tweet, uh, twin, twin beast, and tweet. He could throw 50, 60 yards, man. I, we had you know little plays. I was kind of playing a flanker, and that's like a receiver that's you know situated in the backfield and shit. So you know, I used to be in the backfield. They used to be pitching me the ball and shit like that. That shit was fun as fuck, man. You'll you'll get what you're looking for too, man. Like be out there with a you know that that shit attracted older guys too, like dudes, older cons who wasn't as fast as they once were, but they were still, you know, stoutly built and shit like that. They can block and shit like that. They would be out there, man, making plays and shit, man. Like it was a, a, a it was a big deal. Man. Yeah, nah, that deep you know, in the pen, in the pen, it's like people respect defense even more. Like, you feel what I'm saying? Like, right, that defense. Right. People love right. that defense, man. When I was up, when I was in Franklin, man, they had a, they had a crazy flag football um, tournament. And, and and I mentioned it in one of my other um, stories. My bro, Saquon, from Fort Green, like, this dude used to be on QB Cube. Like, he's, he don't supposed to be out. It's Cube. It had, like, 60 or 90 days QB right. Cube. And this dude be making people sleep in his bed yeah, sneaking out and sneaking to the yard to play flag football and these niggas like yo yo say yo we can't we can't win without you we can't win without you and this nigga, nigga used to be to that wreck man yeah. nigga addicted to that wreck what they gonna do man the worst gonna happen they gonna take me to the hole and shit man i'm about to go out here and get this wreck if you're not going nowhere why not try it what the fuck Real talk, but I, I i don't play football but you know i know it ain't nothing more adrenaline Adrenaline pumping and then scoring a touchdown. That should just have Back. You, that should have Back. your adrenaline on five thousand. Seen some tight games where everybody in the yard, like people that's doing other shit, niggas are playing horseshoes and you know bocce ball and shit. They ended up they 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 put down what they doing and start gathering towards the football field because the team, you know, about to go into overtime or some shit like that in a flag football game, man. And this is just crazy. Shit. Waiting for a play to be made and shit. You know what I'm saying? And and uh, the activities department had it like this. If it was a game going on and the yard got called, you know, in New York I, they call it early go back or whatever. When they tell everybody you got to go back, in, go back in, yeah. they would lead them out. Out the, the guys who playing, they finish the game. The activities for the department stay out there with them and let them finish the game, yeah. and then they go back to their cell. That shit real. That's real. Word. That's how, like, up north, like, in New York, I don't know about the other jails, but, in, like, if it's playoff season in basketball or football, like, and a playoff game goes into overtime, they let motherfuckers stay up and watch that because that shit will cause a straight riot. If you try to pacification. turn... Pacification. <laughs> it's pacification. Niggas need that shit, man. They know what's going up. They know it's going to be problems. Niggas need that shit. Niggas need to be able to scream and smile. And, Imagine you know, if it's the playoffs, though, and y'all watching you all, y'all watching the NBA playoffs and niggas be like, all right, lights out, and it's three minutes left in the oh, in overtime. You understand what I'm saying? Two minutes left in overtime on, in the playoff game. Niggas will be ready to pop off. Oh, uh, in state prisons up in Pennsylvania, everybody got TVs and they sell shit. Every even the guys that send them dorms and them cubes and shit, everybody got they they did just had their headphones on. And shit. So so the jail you talking about? This is a a, a, a jail with cells. The one you was playing on I, the team, or it's a dorm. It was dorm. They had both. They had both. They had um cells and shit, a top tier and a bottom tier, and then in the, in the back there was a dorm. The dorm would have people in there who might have been, um, you know, wheelchair accessible. You know what I mean? Some shit like that. You know what I mean? Because it was on the first floor and shit. And, um, not, it wasn't like no geriatric shit. Niggas used to be back there in them dorms gambling and shit like that. I never was in the dorm. I always wanted my own cell. I didn't I think I was in a dorm before, maybe, maybe for some days and shit. I wasn't feeling that shit. Plus, I snored. I used to have problems with niggas about snoring in jail. <laughs> I got a story about a dude that was snoring <laughs> crazy. He said he needed his own cell. Oh yeah, I seen niggas. 
fat niggas and shit, niggas that got, I don't know, sleep apnea, can't breathe and shit, snore the fuck out of their cellies and shit that had incidents and shit. The nigga said something, nigga hit the bottom of my bunk. Yo, yo, homie, you snore. That's my, my, my man. I'm sleep. Do not fucking disrupt me to fuck come in here resting, my niggas. You know what I mean? He was an older guy. It was his cell. That's how whoever was there first and shit. It's your cell. Shit, I was getting moved in a couple of days and shit. So don't you hit this motherfucking bunk again, man. But for whatever reason, I snore, I guess. But not me on some other shit, though. Flag football, like, hey, bro, listen. Let me tell you how serious flag football is, though. Like, my pops back in the days, in the early 80s, they had a wild, crazy flag football league in Central Park. It was a Central mm. Park football league where they played people from all over New York City. And when I tell you these games, it was, first of all, they were in the freezing cold because it was the same exact time as regular football season. Football season, right. And it was the, yo, my entire, my pops played on a team called UFO. And they was one of the best teams. And this, these dudes, bro, we be out there in sub-zero temperatures. They had real referees. They had everything. And the whole game be packed. And it was wars. You had dudes. I remember I was a little kid. But I remember my pops used to tell me stories that he had defensive linebackers on his team that every morning they ate a, before the game, they ate a dozen, a dozen of eggs. A dozen yeah, of eggs. School shit. And a oh, fucking whole Italian bread to the head. You understand what I'm saying? Before the game, like, I used to be like, what? Dozen eggs? But when I seen these niggas, I was like, all right, I'll understand. But one day, I got to go in. I got to get son on the show, my pops. And I want to go into depth about that um whole Central Park Football League. Because it was flag football. But it was outrageous games that was going into overtime. And you understand what I'm saying? Plays that this was before, you know uh cell phones and shit but i got an uncle that he got all these games on tape on vhs and beta max yeah, right. and he be cuffing them shits crazy <laughs> i'm gonna try to get my hands on them man if this channel uh, blows up that's a great idea i'm looking forward to seeing that keep on packaging original content wise you're gonna continue to flourish on online and shit i appreciate you for having me I appreciate you for coming on the show, my bro. We're going to do some more shit soon. You heard? Subscribe to my channel, The Real Gully TV. Laz, I'm up out of here. I appreciate you, my nigga. One. Right, my bro. Peace. Get to explain the roots of where their life went wrong. You feel what I'm saying? Whether it be their parents was on drugs or they was in the streets raising themselves as kids. Like, you didn't win unless you made a transition from that into something positive. So if you want to talk about you won and you still in the streets, you a loser. You ain't win unless you took that and you took all that pain and strife and that and, 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 and all the trials and tribulations you've been through. You took that and you turned it into something positive, then you won. That's the victory right there. You know what I'm saying? That's what I was telling my This call was from a federal prison. If a law loves hard thugs, why is kids all scarred up? Tricked in the bar, stuck. Why the hard luck? Why the funerals? Elevated urinals, pray they don't mural you. Is the sewers true? Is the Christ coming? I just had to write something. Tell me what it's like, cousin. As above, so below. Peace, far. As above. Elijah. So below. Peace, hey yo, LAZ man, hit me up at the Gem Pop LLC at gmail.com or send me a DM at Real St. Laz if you want to collab or if you need that music promo. You heard?